you know whose thoughts I'm curious to hear on this? Because he was in Philadelphia witnessing it all. I'm curious when he tuned out of this one. I'm seeing him smiling, even though there wasn't really much to smile about tonight. Alex Weiner, who covers the Diamondbacks for us with Arizona Sports, checking in from Citizens Bank Ballpark in Philly. Alex, first of all, hi. How are you? Are you okay? Recovered? Hi. Recovered. I'm doing fine. How are you guys doing? We're, uh, we've been venting a I lot. on the field. Yeah, exactly. We've been venting a lot. And apparently there was a one point where a fan rushed onto the field and the security card absolutely decked him. So it's been that kind of a night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Just we're going to start general takeaway. What is your immediate takeaway from a 10 nothing loss in game two? Yeah. um, Gosh, where do you even start with this one? I mean, I I guess we could start with Merrill Kelly, I I guess that's a good place to start. I know we're going to get into the offense and bullpen late and kind of losing it at the end of the game where sort of everything starts to fall off the wagon. But uh, I guess starting with Merrill Kelly, it it really comes down to with him and Gallon, just a few mistakes that the Phillies aren't missing. They they did not miss a mistake. Kyle Schwarber said the first game, they weren't going to take hittable pitches. And even in this game, you know, Merrill, he only gave up three hits. They just all happened to be solo home runs. And I, I think he mentioned he made two mistakes, you know, one to Schwarber and then one to Turner. Um, that ended up being home runs. But other than that, I think he kept them competitive enough. You know, it's it's tough going up against this lineup and keeping your team in it when the offense isn't doing anything. So, you know, it was kind of a gutty performance from Kelly. The numbers aren't going to look great, but ultimately they were still in the game by the time that he came out of it. Um, and then on the other side, just offensively, just they never got anything into a rhythm. You know, Corbin Carroll leads off the game, getting on with an error, and then nothing happens. Catal Marte has a couple hits, but ultimately Aaron Nola was just dealing tonight. Again, kind of like Wheeler was kind of firing on all cylinders in game one. Nola was throwing them off balance, mixing up speeds. I mean, he was terrific all night, and the D-backs took a lot of strikes. They swung through a lot of pitches. Um, they just didn't put that many opportunities to score out there, and ultimately they were just outclassed tonight. Alex, I want Alex, to, I want to s- circle back. Circle there back there for a second. For a second. Um, you were talking specifically about Corbin Carroll getting on to lead off the game w- on that error, and then decides not to go for second base. It's the second game in a row where that happened. Did Tori Lovello give any sort of explanation as to why the Diamondbacks don't seem to be as? They're not running as much. It feels like they're scared. Are they scared? I don't know if they're scared. I mean, Corey had, had a an explanation for why Corbin didn't go in this game. I mean, Aaron Nola was slide stepping. He had been doing that in the second last couple of months of the season. And the way Tory put it, it felt like they scouted that his effectiveness as a pitcher goes down when he slide steps. So they thought that they had an opportunity offensively to potentially capitalize, uh, and it didn't work. But and then in game one. It was kind of a situation where he credited Wheeler for kind of mixing up the looks, and Corbin never felt comfortable enough to get a good jump and go. So, but yeah, it's a little bit different to see them not trying to, you know, be the aggressors on the base paths, especially when they get the leadoff hitter, you know, to start the game in both games, and he doesn't go, and they ultimately do nothing with it. Ultimately, again, they did nothing with it anyway. Maybe if he gets a second base, that puts more pressure on the defense. Maybe that creates something, but. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's not like he was moved to second base naturally anyway. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a tough situation to, you know, continuously not you know get much going offensively early, and that seemed to be an opportunity, but it just wasn't the right timing for them, I guess. I know it's again minutia, and I know you gave a de- uh, the reasoning for it based off of what Tori told you, but it almost feels like to me they're abandoning their offensive identity not even giving Corbin at least one chance at a steal because, again, he didn't get another opportunity on base tonight, if I recall correctly. Do you feel like they're abandoning their identity as a result of how the Phillies have aggressively combated their pitching? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a two games where they went up against their two best pitchers and and they came out empty. And, you know, I don't know. It, it was, you know, certainly not the at-bats that you want to see as far as taking pitches that are strikes and swinging through a lot. I mean, it's, um, they, they were just over, overmatched in both of those out in both of those matchups. I, I don't know. It, it feels like, yeah, you want to get guys on and get them going, but 
ultimately their chaotic strategy works with base runners. If they're drawing walks, if they're more disciplined, if they foul more pitches off, if they work pitchers. And I guess in that sense, these past two games haven't looked like the Diamondbacks offense um, just because of the lack of dynamic to it. So, yeah, I guess you could say that so far this series, they haven't looked like themselves. But again, it's it's two games and they're going back home. And so it's still an opportunity there. Alex Weiner, our D-backs insider, checking in from Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia after the 10 to nothing loss for the Diamondbacks in game two. Alex, that dropped pop-up uh, late in the game when you were already way down and I think the third baseman, the catcher, and the pitcher all had a play on that pop-up, and none of them went for it. It just kind of uh, was symbolic to me of how the game was going. It didn't feel like anybody was fully in it. Uh, it kind of felt like they gave up on the play, and it kind of felt like they gave up on the game at some point. Um, how do the Diamondbacks refocus themselves as a team and try to put that that, that focus on the fundamentals? Yeah, that was jarring. I mean, this is a team, that, and, and Tori said this after, that they didn't play diamondback baseball, which he kind of classified as, you know, doing the fundamentals, you know, being mature in the box and kind of grinding through it. Um, and yeah, you're right. It, it, it was a little strange because it wasn't only the drop pop-up, but um, even the sack fly, and ultimately nothing came of it, but Lourdes Gurriel makes the catch, and it he turns around as if it was the third out. Um, can't confirm if he thought it was the third out or if he just turned around but it, it kind of looked that way so there, there was a few moments that were kind of low moments late in the game execution on the mound I mean um, it, it just it got away from them pretty quickly so as far as flushing the page I mean it's this baseball um, they play again in two days so at least they'll, it's one of those things like would you rather play tomorrow and try to get this out of your mouth or take the rest day regroup and then go back to it um, different players probably give you different answers with that but yeah, I mean, it just it, it is what it is. They 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 got to hand it to them here. Um, but you know, it's one of those things where you know they're not out yet, and in baseball, you have to have a short memory with this kind of stuff. So, if I were to phrase it like this, if you think this series is over, would you say no? No, I, I mean, obviously, you know, going over the numbers, teams that start off two zero in the NLCS, or teams that I believe those teams that start off two and zero in a best of seven series win 84% of the time, something like that, 84.2, I believe. So, you know, obviously, historically, it, it hasn't looked good for a team that falls down 0-2. At the same time, there's also this saying that the series isn't over until the home team loses. Um, we'll see what happens. You know, if they're giving the ball to Brandon Fott in game three, the Phillies will likely go Ranger Suarez. Um, big opportunity for the rookie, a big opportunity for the offense to kind of get back going. It's, it's, it's not really... I mean, it's never over until it is, but um, they're in a hole right now. And if they don't climb out of it in game three, then you can start literally looking at it as, oh boy, this, this might be done. So I want to follow up then, because if the Diamondbacks are going to make a series out of this, they will have to face Zach Wheeler again. And if they want to make this a series that they win, they will have to face Aaron Nola again. So what do you think from the way that you viewed these first two games, what has to change from the Diamondbacks' offensive approach if they want to get back in this series and when they face those two guys again, if they get the opportunity. It's funny, Tori had, a, had an answer to a question um, in his post-game presser where he talk, talked about like not wanting to give too much information on how they would attack Nolan next time because they're going to see him again. Um, so maybe that gives an idea of just how, like what the mindset is that they feel like they're going to see these guys once more. But yeah, I mean, with Nola specifically tonight, I mean, it was just... Um, and even with Wheeler, it was it was getting down in counts and just kind of a lack of like battling through it, um, not attacking, you know, the right pitches just because they were, you know, they were mixed up. I mean, Wheeler and Nola both did an excellent job of that. So, um, yeah, I, I think there's got to be more of an emphasis on battling through some of these at bats, um, attacking the pitches that you know are right there. But um, I don't know. That, that's that's something that they're going to have to game plan for over the next. You know, however many days, if you know they get to see those guys again, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to have all the answers to that one. Alex Weiner, our D-backs insider. I, I wouldn't know how to hit. I wouldn't know how to hit Aaron Nola after what I saw. No, I want to see you try <laughs> though. I want to see that happen. Get in the cage. 
one of these games. I don't know. Sorry, Steve. One of those ahead. things. Like if you had a year, if you had a year to train for, like, would you be able to get a base hit off of Baranola if you got ten at bats? Hey, like, listen. Still probably no. They let. <laughs> they let. The way he was throwing today. They let Billy Crystal play for the Yankees. So I mean, anything is possible. Uh, Alex Weiner, our sure. D-backs insider, is checking in from Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia after the game two loss. Uh, Alex, I'm gonna. This is my last question for you, and I think it's your answer is gonna tell us a lot about the state of the Diamondbacks right now. After no a pressure. ten to nothing loss, and you walk into that clubhouse after the game, how would you describe the mood? Um, pretty quiet. Although not everyone was in there, some guys, you know, got done early. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was, I, I guess, a little bit more quiet, but ultimately, you know, not a ton of panic. I mean, talked to Christian Walker and um, to Tommy Pham and. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's just about flushing it, getting on the plane, getting back to Phoenix and regrouping. Um, it's, it's obviously going to be tough tonight. It's going to be a long plane ride. I mean, you lost 10 nothing, you know, in a huge game. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's, it doesn't feel like – it doesn't feel like all is lost, I guess, would be the mood that I took from in there, even though it's, it's definitely a stinger tonight and definitely a shocker tonight. All right, I want to end on a fun one because this wasn't necessarily a fun work trip, but I'm sure Philadelphia was at least a fun destination for you to visit, and maybe you had some time earlier today, perhaps. Did you get to have a cheesesteak? No, I didn't have a cheesesteak, oh. unfortunately, but I got to walk around. I, I got to walk around. I saw the Liberty Bell. I went to city. I, I got to do some sightseeing. I'd never been to Philadelphia before, so that, that part of it was fun, and, and the ballpark is beautiful, and um you know, everyone's talked about like the crowd and the environment. I mean, it's a great place to watch a game. So all that stuff was good. It was just, uh, yeah, a tough night at the ballpark for the Diamondbacks. Well, I'm glad you got to enjoy the non-work part of it. And hopefully the travel back home is very nice for you, Alex. We look forward to talking with you again. When game three comes around on Thursday, safe travels back to the Valley. All right. Thanks, guys.